very thankful for the organizers giving me this great opportunity to talk here and, and at this great occasion of Silver Jubilee celebrations. Being a world student of this college, I, I, I had the great honor of receiving a doctorate here. I don't know, uh, that is uh, really one of, uh, I think I am the only person that is uh, alumni uh, got this honor. Which is, it is really, really a great pleasure to come again and again here. And I am working with the whole department as much as possible to cooperate and get a lot of knowledge, get a lot of things to uh, take it to the farmers level. So with this, I, 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 I have the largest uh, connection with the biotech department of the university and we have a lot of uh, uh, collaboration activities which I will be entering in the uh, course of time. See, there's such a conventional slide. You know, the population is going to be very huge in 2050. It is, it is going to be expected to be at 9, million, 9 billion uh, people. This is a real, uh, 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 real reality which we have to expect. We have to see that. Oh, see, one side the population grows. The other side the land, land is not growing. It is static. The, the, if you see the arable land available per, per uh, person, is getting reduced over the years. When the population goes up, the area uh, per person is getting reduced. And if you see the supply and demand, supply and demand for certain up to some time it was matching. After that, the gap started widening. It is, it is, I don't see there is any uh, anything which can come near to this uh, to the, the supply and demand level. This is a widening gap. This is a, to all have to accept in the, with uh, full reality. See, within 2025, we need to increase our productivity in at least another 50 percent. Otherwise. We will not be able to meet the uh, growing uh, demand. We'll, today, if you take, uh, as far as uh, we, are, we are concerned, our average yield is much lesser. It's about 2.5 tons per hectare. And uh, see, 6.6 6 .6 tons is a too big start, uh, target for uh, 2025 for to reach uh, uh, our uh, uh, requirement. Next. So Indian agriculture scenario, if you see that we have the, the total area rise in the largest uh, country and the irrigated area was the first one. So we have the highest uh, irrigated area. Wheat area is the uh, second large, largest and I am sorry rice is a mistake here. Rice is the world largest area cultivated in India. Water is the second largest. So, uh, we have, though we have 142 million hectares, but our production is around 25, 250, 260 million tons. Whereas, countries like China, less area, they get around 450 million, uh, million uh, uh, tons for, uh, as a food, food production in that country. If you see, Indian production is, uh, is 105 million tons rice we are producing. And we 93 million uh, tons we are producing. You see, this is this looks like today we, we may feel that we are we are in surplus, but actual uh, uh, terms uh, today we, we are exporting rice to the uh, various countries, and we are the largest exporters of rice as, as of today. And water is another crop where we export uh, the second largest crop in the uh, uh, in the world. We are, our exports is both cotton and textile products up to 25 million dollars 
work is, uh, is uh, being exported, which is, is agriculture, income is going to be the greatest contribution for our uh, uh, Indian GDP. What is it? See, we, 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 uh, we saw that a lot of death, uh, gaps in the production and productivity. How are we going to uh, uh, meet it? We are, we are suffering because of the low productivity, poor irrigation facilities. There are many areas where we, we suffer, but we are not able to make up our uh, yield. And naturally, there is another area where, where because of the drought conditions prevailing, often coming drought, we are facing a lot of yield uh, uh, loss and people are suffering, suffering very heavily, production goes down. There are areas where uh, the saline, uh, salinity is a uh, uh, big uh, problem. People, areas like Punjab where, where the, the uh, irrigation was plenty available, but if they go for under, tapping under, underground water, they are also facing the salinity. The salinity is going to be a big problem in many areas. Areas like in uh, eastern India where the submergence problem in, water, in uh, rice, more excess water in some areas, these are all our uh, uh, challenges. There are again about biotic stresses, insects, pests, diseases, or causing very uh, heavy damages to the crops. The, the only one technology today is uh, for, uh, available, which is for water. No, none other technology is, is immediately available for uh, the farmers to go. It becomes very difficult for the breeders to introduce the resistant uh, gene into their uh, breeding program. It is, it is uh, uh, very, very, very difficult. Actually, the breeders are not able to increase the productivity and then we have reached a plateau in the production side, maximum we have reached and our effort should be now to save the loss, of, uh, loss through, due to various biotic stresses and abiotic stresses. But how to, work in a short span of time, achieving this is a big, big, very big uh, difficulty and it is not, there is no sources of resistance available uh, easily for for the breeders, even if they, they get their resource, resources, then it is not very sure that they will be able to achieve it. It is only very, very rarely people can achieve the resistance in, uh, for, for this biotic stresses. Abiotic stresses like now drought. Drought is the serious problem in this country. If you see that nowadays, last two, last three, four years, Huge uh, areas uh, and, and especially in Tamil Nadu is coming under drip irrigation to mitigate this, uh, uh, the, the drought situation and use the water very economically. But still, uh, the, uh, further uh, uh, we are not able to assess how we are going to save this crop. This is, this is really a very big uh, uh, issue. Then uh, the, the drought, especially for uh, uh, terminal droughts and uh, uh, the, the uh, water shortages due uh, to drought, water shortages and excess water, these are all the serious uh, uh, problems. Heat, sudden heat, see there in wheat, uh, people face suddenly the temperature goes up, the heat goes down. Suddenly, but 10 days, 15 days, the critical time, the temperature goes, goes up. The uh, yield is getting done. How, uh, getting reduced. How are we going to face this uh, these kind of uh, challenges? This is really uh, area which we need to uh, find a solution quickly. Otherwise, uh, it is very difficult for us to uh, move for a, uh, a higher uh, productivity. With the limited availability of resources and emerging threat of biotic, abiotic stresses and to meet the production demand, there is no, a need for technology-based breeding approaches for which 
we need we, uh, we need to concentrate more on molecular breeding, transgenic breeding, and uh, uh, mutational breeding and other uh, new novel uh, product tools. Technology revolution for crop improvement that see we need to get good uh, jump blossom first. Getting a jump blossom is a issue. Uh, then available jump blossom is being uh, largely exploited. We have to create more jump blossom or go for a more uh, of, uh, and creation of new jump blossom for producing them into some wide uh, species. So a lot of uh, things have to happen uh, uh, crop management has to be improved. Exploitation, uh, the, the jump loss of exploitation is the other area. Then uh, there is not enough further improvement it can happen only by uh, molecular breeding or uh, transgenic breeding with uh, or rotational uh, breeding. This way this the improved uh, see this biotechnology uh, uh, contribution you get the improved traits with the improved uh, seeds with the required uh, traits. These are the two examples which has given the, the yield advantage, productivity increase has gone because of the introduction of technology. Number one is maybe cotton. You can see clearly see the, uh, the introduction of hybrid technology has given a jump and later with the introduction of PD technology, the, the, the yield has substantially has, has, has gone up, which result that the, the farmers uh, getting around the farmers income to the extent of 12 billion uh, dollars in the country. Next, uh, uh, corn. Corn is again, uh, the hybrid technology has given some improvement. Then the introduction of uh, single class hybrids. This is another uh, big uh, jump in the production today. Uh, is more than 8 million hectares in India is now under uh, corn. You see the world by there are about 27 countries uh, have accepted, adopted biotechnology which is, uh, uh, which is nearly 175 million hectares of the uh, cultivated in the world is, is with the biotech crops. Of which India becomes the fourth country, fourth largest country that we cultivate nearly around 11.5 11, 11, 11 million hectares. So that is only one trait, that is uh, cotton, uh, one crop, only uh, cotton, the one crop which we have adopted. See, after the growth of the biotech uh, crops, industrial countries have already grown and uh, the, the further growth is now is coming from developing countries. This is Say, uh, the, there is a plateau uh, these in uh, developing countries. Developing countries have got large scope to improve uh, in, uh, uh, for adoption of, of this technology, which is being increasingly uh, increasing now. Out of many trades, herbicide trade is one major dominant trade which is being adopted in the, in the world world. Uh, and then next to that is a uh, cotton, cotton uh, especially insect uh, resistant trait. So next few future traits which is going to help us are all the things that we need to develop uh, technologies for biotech and diabetes uh, tolerances and we have to have uh, uh, technology for yield enhancement water use efficiency where the, uh, to manage the drought situation uh, or manage the crop with a limited available water. Nitrogen use efficiency this is one area where uh, very important in India we are, we are uh, globally it is being uh, used nitrogen is, uh, urea is consumed nearly 100 million tons so uh, 1000 million tons if if uh, out of which 50 percent goes as waste and this goes down in the soil and, and, uh, and spoils the 
water. Water is everywhere, uh, it's getting damaged because of this uh, salt uh, accumulation and this water, water use efficiency technology which is coming up well, it will, will save the loss of the nitrogen and thereby the water uh, can be uh, protected. And virus is another uh, uh, big area where the, most of the vegetables are very seriously affected by uh, viruses. So that, that area needs to be uh, uh, the uh, to, to what is that we are going to find for the solution is a big question. Then uh, the second generation pest control, whatever uh, uh, new uh, uh, pests are emerging due to the climate changes and all that new new generation pests are emerging for which we need to uh, uh, find a way how, how to uh, control this. These are the, 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 the technology requirement from biotech. Uh, so I, the, for this, achieving the, to meet, to meet the challenges agriculture faces, we need to develop a good partnership different uh, areas. Here are the uh, criticism spoke about the private sector, public sector uh, strength. They, we have to understand our, each other's strength, public sector strength and private sector strength. And there should be, there, there should be a perfect combination of uh, factors which, uh, uh, which where uh, private sector is stronger, where the public sector is stronger, this perfect marriage happens, then uh, we will be able to have a successful uh, partnership. I will explain that the uh, uh, partnership is already existing. Thank you. So, with a work right, we say that uh, the private and public investment, we see 28% only the uh, public investment in the mindset. <laughs> And private investment is up to 72 percent. Whereas in India, it is only 26 uh, percent from uh, private and uh, 73 percent uh, from public. This means public uh, institutions in, in India is still spending the, the maximum uh, amount of uh, resources for developing uh, the uh, uh, technologies and uh, the research inputs. So this is a uh, these people are the but from public sector, who had, who were the, who became partners of the multinational companies, because of their association, very big technologies has come out for the, uh, uh, the usage in the uh, biotech sector. Our experience, see, we, we, we took a decision from the, when we entered into the uh, biotech area, not to go for a basic research, not to go for a development of gene or, or uh, understanding all those things. We, we decided to outsource all these things and, and uh, uh, so outsource it through, uh, from different universities or different uh, uh, companies with, which are, who are stronger in that area. And we also uh, uh, taken a decision not to go in for a big uh, global uh, crops where to, where we need to compete the uh, the international uh, companies, multinational companies. So we were trying to concentrate more of the locally important crop, for which we we, are, we were trying to source the technology uh, as much as possible locally. So that way we have uh, made uh, uh, the the association with uh, DNAU, Madurai Kamraj University, and. Uh, 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 IRI, New Delhi, like this, uh, many institutions. Next. We have, these are our collaborations, with, we have in various uh, institutions in the country and uh, outside also. We have a, uh, 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 the IRI, DNAU, Madurai Kamal University, we have a, uh, one collaboration with Kamal uh, University. We have a collaboration with Eugen, a company from Israel. We are sourcing uh, uh, genes for uh, yield enhancement and drought tolerance for uh, this company. Key gene, we are associated with them on the marker development projects. 
and uh, uh, we got energies from Batawa University also for rights. See, uh, what we expect from the uh, private public partnership, the project has to be, uh, the client project has to be conceived and uh, to, from conception level to uh, commercialization level, commercialization level, licensing of public research outputs to private centers. So, uh, uh, whatever developed by the public sector has to come to the uh, private sector for, uh, for uh, uh, commercialization. Where uh, here I would uh, uh, suggest here, before any projects are taken by the public sector, and private and public has to have a common understanding because private sector has got larger connection with the farmers across the country and they are spending a lot of effort, lot of money for understanding the need, the research need and the product need, the farmers need. They have a better understanding. If that is taken care of while formulating a project by the public institutions, then really we will be able to join better and go to create a better product which will help the farm, farming community in a big way. We need uh, uh, support from uh, for creating biosafety uh, uh, studies and uh, the economical evaluation which is already so some, somewhere it happens and somewhere we need to strengthen. Human resources development. Uh, this is a very great uh, uh, importance and the TNA is the, one of the biggest institutions in the country creating the, the wonderful manpower. I keep hearing our people, uh, our uh, graduates and our uh, scientists who got trained and put, got graduated this university working worldwide, anywhere, any country, wherever I, I go, I could see some uh, spot one of the peoples. So worldwide it's become so familiar. And, world, and people are only, uh, working in large uh, corporations. But one uh, request for, for, for all of you, don't forget Indians, Indian companies. Indian companies uh, uh, do not have the deep pockets what uh, the international companies have. But we have uh, the, the talent, you know? we, we have the easy possibility of reaching our uh, farmers. Whatever multinational companies have a strength, but ultimately they have to sell that technology, license that technology, and through us, Indian companies, only they can reach the farmers. They, they can never reach directly to the farmers. They, they, they can reach to a certain extent, but fullest extent is possible only for Indian companies. We need uh, uh, to have, uh, have uh, more strength, more support from, uh, from uh, human uh, resources, from the government, from the universities, everywhere we need to support, support from the, the public institution. In fact, as uh, our, uh, uh, my uh, previous speaker, uh, Dr. Alas Pradyum's speech, he showed a chart where, where the globally so much hundreds, hundreds of uh, institutions working for one company. So here, we have large institutions in this in this country, the all large institutions can specialize in many areas and the large seed companies are here and they can specialize in, specialize in different areas which can uh, form a very good uh, uh, combination with thereby we will be able to come out with a very uh, strong and, uh, product. We need not compete the, uh, the multinationals, but we can develop our local strength so that we will be able to take care of our local important crops, which is which, uh, which uh, the, the multinational uh, companies are not interested at all. So far, agriculture is more, mostly on, on uh, conventional uh, way it, it, is, it was going, 
had the breeding, uh, body science, everything was uh, the old conventional method. Now it is a high time that agriculture should be driven by uh, technology. All, all technology uh, should be available for agriculture. And the farmers are ready to embrace any kind of technology, provided what they expect they want and uh, uh, value for it. But they are ready to invest any amount of money and uh, for which they are ready to uh, pay, uh, pay any amount of money. For example, in the case of cotton, when, when it was released first, we were worried about this, uh, how much cost the farmer has to spend 1,000 uh, rupees per packet. Today, the farmer is ready to spend about 3,000 uh, rupees, three packets per acre, one packet uh, from one packet, and now we have got two packets, three packets. They're spending 2,000, 3,000 rupees per acre. Because of the changed agronomic practices, they are able to get much more yield, much more assured yield. So then he is ready to invest money. That is not the issue, but uh, we need to have technology which is which is suitable for them and which is which the farmer are uh, comfortable uh, uh, for uh, getting their harvest. So we we, we need to. So the, the, the private, private companies have to understand, small companies have to understand about the new uh, technologies, emerging technologies for which we need the association of the uh, universities. In fact, if we take in, uh, uh, in India, there are about 200, 250 seed companies, but uh, accepting this multinational companies, if you see how many Indian companies are working in uh, the, this biotechnology area. It is very limited, about five, six companies, not more than that. And again, uh, the problem here is, you know, well, in every product you get, we have to work for a longer time, longer regulatory uh, process, and takes five, uh, eight years, ten years. So that much we are, uh, people are not uh, strong. That's where uh, uh, the people are not coming for uh, investment. But now the climates are changing. Now what I am hearing that government of India is also there is a thinking that we should uh, support uh, the uh, Indian companies because of the controversies, many controversies are, are coming because the large corporations are uh, coming with this technology because the people are fear that large corporations will, will uh, take away our wealth. That's what the uh, fear. So uh, that's why the, the controversies so much are there. Still now. The government has slowly started realizing it and they started uh, 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 thinking how to support uh, uh, the Indian companies. Only thing is now, see we have a lot of manpower available, a lot of uh, experience people available. We have to, uh, uh, we, we have to take these people, uh, these people out to choose the Indian companies, join them, work with them. And, uh, uh, and this, they should, they will get a big satisfaction to see a product. If you go to the multinational company, it is a compartmentalized. They do not know what for he is working. He work, uh, research, he is work, works, works. His work is a small area he work. But if you join me a uh, company like uh, us, and then there you will see the product. You will see that how the farmer is benefiting. You see how the, uh, the farmer is happily using it. That is the, the advantage with our uh, Indian companies, uh, which, which can uh, have a direct uh, uh, impact on the Indian for our One final request for all. So I, I have been always sourcing my uh, requirement of uh, people from this university. I give always a lot of uh, importance. We take people uh, from here. There is some uh, thing, the, the latest trend among peoples who come out of this institution and they feel that uh, 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 like they think like 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock they can go, 10 o'clock they come to the office, uh, sit in the office and do something in the computer uh, and uh, uh, 5, 6 they go out. It's an easy going uh, uh, trend is, uh, this, is there. But that is not going to serve. No, you want to have what, what you are studying, what you have uh, understood. Have you done anything uh, related to your, to your job? I have, I have done, I have read my, uh, I, I, I got graduated only here as only a BSc agri graduate. 
I uh, I got a great inspiration with our doctor, uh, our ex uh, uh, director, who was a, who was my genetics teacher. So uh, I understood the hybrid technology. I was so impressed with the, the fourth year or fifth year. I, I remember I was taken to the, the seed company here. I saw that uh, the hybrid actually producing that. What is online, relayed online? He only taught class in our class, but that took me. When I saw that in the, practically in the field, that took me a lot of interest, created a lot of interest. So that from there, started maybe in 1965, but I could build up this company only in the 80s and 90s. So that, that kind of hard work, today you all praise me uh, of having achieved this. this. This is possible by everybody, provided you are sincere, serious and work till uh, you achieve certain things, you must get satisfaction only seeing the, the product in the, uh, the field and giving some benefit to the others. That is the lifetime, that should be the motto of, uh, of your uh, uh, life. So I only I request that has to be uh, in mind for the graduates and graduates coming out of uh, uh, this uh, uh, university. And there is another area which I am facing difficulty is the understanding between breeders and biotechnologists. This is another area, though I have, uh, was, uh, I have connections with the biotech uh, for last 6 or years, but still I am struggling. Even my company also, the, the, the breeders generally, I mean, making this uh, breeding group and uh, biotech group to work together becomes a difficult, uh, it is a diff still difficult. So that you have to change that. Uh, you should not come out with that different, you are superior or they are inferior or they are superior, you are inferior. You should not come to that, uh, with that idea. So with, without this, without the combination of breeding and uh, the biotechnology, the product is not there. Is not, you cannot get a viable product, you cannot get, uh, uh, be successful in your, your life. Please keep this in mind and, uh, and shape your career. Thank you very much.